Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Keiko Talks. Tonight, we're continuing our game of We're Not Really Strangers with Level 2 Connection. Let's get into it. All right, so Courtney, before we jump into Level 2, um, so Level 2 is about connection. Um, share your thoughts on what you thought about Level 1. Yeah, so Level 1 was, um, you know kind of like interesting get to know you type questions you know mm-hmm. little things I wouldn't have thought like the MySpace question was interesting because we didn't yeah. even grow up with MySpace but you know being able to really sit and think like hmm, what would my sister's MySpace song really be or yeah, like yeah, your yeah. Instagram account so I mean I like the game so far it's definitely I'm definitely excited to see like what other questions come about because I don't think I've ever played this or no, I played it maybe one time, but we didn't go. Yeah, like we got far. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited to see like what is revealed. And some of your questions actually surprised me because we like really? I chose a couple questions and Caitlin chose questions that I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad you like it because I really like this game. I play this game all the time, so I'm glad you enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Who matches? All right. So. Game? Um, I don't know. There, I think it's, I don't, I'm not really sure. I just know the brand is called We're Not Really Strangers. Um, okay. And there, I mean, there's like a background story to how it became, you know, all the, the cool little nitty gritty details and stuff like that, which yeah. I, I researched at one point. I just don't remember. They also have a really cool website um, and merchandise and stuff like that. I really, I really like the brand. Um, I also have the edition packs, I guess you call them. And um, so I have like the healing one, a self-love one, and I have, um, they have a couple's one, they have a friend's one, they have other versions and whatnot. But it's just like a good way to ask a lot of like common questions, even comments that you may not think to ask and get on a deeper level without being maybe like intrusive or wording it in a way that's offensive or um, just not productive, I really, so. Gotcha. Yeah, because it seems like it could be with like the... um People who make um, black are revoked, you know. It seems like in that mm. vein, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it is. Not, it's just not. Uh, it's more in like an, an interpersonal level. Interpersonal. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's not exactly that, but you know. Yeah, those are more for like for fun. This is. I wouldn't necessarily, like, I enjoy this game because I think, like, okay, let me be honest. I'm a little nosy, so I like to know these things about people, but it is not necessarily a game that I would play not feeling comfortable in a certain crowd, right? Yeah. Um, Because it is, it can be kind of, the deeper you go into it, so the higher the levels, the more personal it gets and the more, like, your feelings, emotions, and blah, 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 so... Exactly. You know, yeah. You make it's not a game safe. you just play with everybody. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody okay. So we're gonna get into level two. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying everybody's having a safe space. Seriously. Seriously. Um, mm-hmm. So we're gonna get into level two. So level two is once again a connection. So I'm gonna ask the first question, then we'll bounce back and forth like we did in the last one. Okay. Cool. All right. So what do you crave more of? Oh, like just like in life in general? Yeah, just in general. Well, I'm superficially, I'm craving some more food <laughs> right now. <laughs> so Honey, <something> like <laughs> seriously, I feel that. <laughs> but um, I think in life in general, um, I think I crave more uh, like... I don't, I don't know what other word. It's not acceptance, but, like, I guess appreciation for, like, the work I put out, what I do, and more, like, mm. I guess, yeah, appreciation for it. And I guess recognition goes along with that, too, but not in a vain sense of, like, like I need to be, like, like everybody needs to be kissing my behind. Not like that, but, like, people just yeah. recognizing the work, seeing it, appreciating it, and, like, really taking it to heart <laughs> I, I could take more of that we'll say that got it okay that's fair yeah um i'm gonna be superficial too in food any at any mm-hmm. and all times and specifically cool quality like, vegan food would be nice because that seems to be hard to find also quality thai food because i really like thai food that mm-hmm. seems to be impossible to find so i would appreciate that um but on a real level 
Um, I know you're gonna be like, Caitlin, you have enough. I really like animals. Like, give me a duck or like oh a donkey or a goat, like a baby goat. Can you imagine? That would be so cool. Um, and then out of like superficial stuff, I feel like I want more like freedom, um, mm-hmm. like financial freedom, more oh, yeah. like just like mental Amen. freedom, freedom Amen. not being like, clouded by trauma, not being clouded by like past things and experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, even like in like a workspace, having the freedom to, you know, maybe run my own business and like that be successful so I can kind of live my life how I want to live my life whatever um also live in my own land where I don't have to like follow the rules and abide by somebody else telling me what I can and cannot do what animals I can and cannot have so I want to say freedom no that's good I think everybody's like looking for freedom in some way somehow tell me about it America is not the land of the free I can promise you that or freedom comes at a cost we'll say that oh it is for sure and I think that's everywhere you go so unfortunately Yeah. yeah that's a really good one I think that's a good thing to crave like is more freedom. And as, as you get older, that's what I think you look more to do is like, it's not just about yeah. trying to like be grown and get on your own and like do mm-hmm. that kind of thing. It's about like, where can I holistically be happy? And that comes with exactly cutting ties sometimes from what we think is the standard, you know? Yeah, for sure. 100%. So, I feel that. Yeah. What do you think it says about us that like you're looking for freedom and I'm like, I just need recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like that's like goes along with like you just being like very like earthy, you know, that kind of vibe. And then you're like, you're just like the opposite of that. So it's fine. I think it's fitting. Yeah, it's fitting. Well, I I like the idea of, a, like I said, appreciation, like really just somebody's or it doesn't have to. I don't know. I, I teeter on the line of I don't want it to sound vain and like, you know, you just want attention or whatever. It's not that it's mm-hmm. like somebody's seriously been like, no, I see what you, I see you and I see what you're doing and I appreciate it. And let's yeah. amplify it so even more people can appreciate it. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. You know. Very uh, true. But yeah. So I'll get to my question, my first question on this list. Um, okay. So what is the last thing you lied to your mother about? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> So, you know, I don't really think I, like, lie to mom. It's more of, like, just omission. Like, there's just certain things I just don't tell her because it's, like, first, on a selfish note, it's, like, why give myself the headache? And for two, yeah. like, why stress the lady out, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't I don't really lie to my mom because it's, there's really no point. Like, yeah, there's just no point. She's either going to find out or she doesn't really care. I'm mm-hmm. not, I hate to not care, but it's just, like, they're not a big of a deal. So, yeah. um, I think the last thing that I omitted was like telling her the reason why I maybe didn't answer her phone calls, but it was just not worth, it was just worth, wasn't worth it. Cause I already knew it would be a bigger than what it, than what it needed to be. So it's just like, uh, ah, I just haven't been in the mood, which that's part well, of the reason it just wasn't like, well, all you the truth. Huh? You know, I'm just what happened? Do you want yeah, to- yeah, yeah. We're not going to talk. Okay. We're not going to talk any further than that, but um, I'll say we just have differing differing beliefs. <laughs> so yeah. there you go. I think the last thing I, I feel like when I call home, I'm, I'm telling the absolute truth because I'm in a panic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I, cool. When I call you and mom, I'm like, I'm like bare face on the ground. I'm like, somebody help me. I'm not like calling because I'm like trying to like, you know act like I got it all together but I think the last thing I probably omitted I like I'd like I think as when I was living with mom I would like thrift shop a little bit too much and so <laughs> <laughs> it's not no now I never thrift shop to the point where I wasn't like paying rent and paying my bills I always pay my bills but mm-hmm. like I just sometimes would be like let me just not obviously walk into the house with these three good will bags. Let me try to like stack them <laughs> on top of one and put it in my bag and like kind of just, hey mom, run upstairs. I'm and dead. In a good bit. <laughs> 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 I'm a good bit. And then I was like, this is like, this is what people who are addicted to shopping do. And, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. That's I'm, why I said goodwill. <laughs> goodwill. 
I will say since coming out here and just having higher rent and all this stuff, I don't even, I really don't even go as much as I, I used to. Like I went the other day for the first time in like two or three weeks. Like it's been a while. So I don't go as much as I did and I have kind of slowed down. But I think because I had the extra like income in mom's house and I was just yeah. like kind of bored, I would just go even more frequently. You know, when I wasn't shooting True. church or like playing volleyball or doing something else, my time I would do that. Because it was, you know, like I said, I collect clothes. So I think that's probably the last thing I like omitted to mom. Probably like that I can think of immediately. But I'm sure in conversation when I just know mom can't handle a certain fact, I'll just play it down or don't say anything about it. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, it's just yeah. like, why like get her all rough, like ruffled her little yeah. feathers all yeah. tizzy? Like, ugh. it's just not worth Like, I feel like it really is like a kid. You know, how you like pick your battles. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Like. But I think that I do that with everybody. Like, it's just like, is it worth me even saying this? Which I feel like that's a part of like maturity. Because before Caitlin would have just said it, like, I would love to ruffle your feathers. But I feel like with mature Caitlin, it's just like, it's not even worth it. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I honestly, there's not much that I would be embarrassed to tell mom. If it like absolutely came down to it, I would tell mom. I wouldn't. 100%. I wouldn't absolutely hide like things from her. Like, it's not that deep. But. It's just like why why ruffle feathers if you absolutely if you don't have, don't have to. to. Yeah, so. and it, it really is like because it's not really for me. It's really like out of protection for her, or like her sanity kind of thing. You know what I mean? Because yeah. really, like I'll say anything. You know, um, it really isn't a secret. I'm pretty transparent about pretty much everything. So yeah, there's really like nothing off limits for me. But I know like my mom, she gets easily frazzled by some of the things yeah. that have come out of my mouth before so it's just like well, why even do that yeah well I will say I've, I've gone on a like slight break from like talking to mom frequently recently and I I will just say like it's been I mean because I'm just in my own transition right now and trying to like figure things out for my own life it's been easier to not worry about like am I offending someone or am I saying something that's gonna like oh, for sure fun? so I just like honestly at this point like I'm just kind of like I'm like doing what I have to do for me and then like then that's kind of it and I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna put that on somebody if I don't have to have you know to. yeah 100% I feel that yeah that, like I said with maturity I feel like that is um in my personal opinion a good thing of just choosing your battles like it's you know, so just being aware, like, you know what? I don't think that person is going to take this well. Let me just not exactly. even go down that that road of like yeah. getting everybody all flustered. And then it becomes something bigger than what it has to be when you could. And it's not, especially if it's something they don't really need to know. It's just like, why bother? Yeah. Well, so. some stuff, honestly, like <laughs> some stuff ends up getting back around to mom somehow, some way. Like, mom, my parking tickets and stuff. <laughs> 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 so, you know, Los Angeles County is going to send you the freaking, you know, like, if you don't pay us, we're going to take your car to the pound. They're going to send that to whatever address is on file. So mom finds out stuff about me, whether I tell her or not. (laughs) You know, that that usually is the truth. Mom usually, like, finds out some way, somehow. So, you know, as much as we try to, like, uh, almost, like, protect her in a way, it always, she always finds out. So, yeah. It's always odd to me how she finds these things out. She's like, I just had a feeling. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <I'm> weirdo. <laughs> no, not weirdo, but just like, that's weird. Yeah. A little strange, but whatever. So, yeah. That's probably the, okay. like, that's probably the last, like, identifiable thing. Everything else has either been omission or protection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, it's really been, like, omission or protection. I can't yeah. remember, like, I don't remember, like, lying to mom about anything. I can't like think of anything major that I just was like, just straight up did not. Yeah. Just was like, no, no, that wasn't me. Or like, yeah. Like straight up. Because we really never had to. Like, mom was pretty like open as long as you communicated. So we really had no reason to lie to her. If we lied to her, first of all, she would always find out. And for yeah. two, it's just like you would get in tr- more trouble for just lying versus just telling her the truth and talking to her. Yeah. So it just wasn't worth it. I agree with that. That's the truth. All right, do you want to get to the next question? 
Yep. Okay. So what are you, what are you more afraid of failure or success and why? Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I'm going to speak for today. Me, I'm probably more afraid of, well, I wish there was a third option of just not reaching my full potential. So I don't know if that's failure or success. Mm -hmm. Really. I'm more afraid that I don't get to, that something will prevent me somehow from not being the absolute best and reaching the absolute highest height for what my, my life is supposed to be. I don't want to, mm-hmm. I guess I don't want to get my own way, but I think what would scare me more, well, if I had to answer just us too, I think success not handled the correct way would scare me more mm-hmm. than failing. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. failing, I can always succeed in another way. Up. I can always uh-huh. get back up. There's always there's a direct answer to failure, which is try it again. Mm-hmm. Success, yeah. and then there's a different finesse because you try to maintain success and you try to mm-hmm. make sure you stay in a successful place, especially if your yeah. lifestyle is created around that. So I would mm-hmm. say I would be more cautious moving into a success realm. Um, not that I'm, it, it's not fear is I would want to make sure that I'm handling it correctly for myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, hmm. that's okay. Okay. So for me, I'm going to say I am, ag- I would agree and say that I'm more afraid of success. And um, I guess it, it also depends on what you consider as con- success, right? Mm-hmm. Um because there is that risk of like losing everything that you worked for, right? You yeah. once you like failure, you you ha- or have nothing. You know, all you have is yeah. to gain. So it's like, okay, well, that's the bright side of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, versus with success, say you're a millionaire, for example, then you've risked losing all the millions you have, and you have this upkeep of this millionaire right. lifestyle, and mm-hmm. so then you're like in this cycle of you know doing things maybe you should not do or don't want to do in order to maintain that if something does not work out, and mm-hmm. so. Um, I would always say this, that I do not want to be successful. I would rather be behind the scenes, minding my business, living my life than to be too successful, AKA like, not even AKA, but being a super, super duper, duper rich kind of thing. I want to be comfortable more than I want to be um, wealthy, you know, a billionaire, for example. You know what I mean? If that comes to me, fine and dandy, but um, do I just seek that out? Not necessarily, right? So I would have to say success too, just because they're all of the risks associated with being um, super successful, especially in like a financial sense. Yeah. But that also depends on what you consider success, because I don't consider just being a millionaire success. Like okay. success for me is being, you know, happy, healthy, um, having the land and stuff that I want, having... Um, a farm. You know, debt paid off, having a farm, being able to live the life that I want to live. That's success for me, so... Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You, you got to learn to quantify success in different ways. And it's not just strictly yeah. financial. I think a lot of times when you are happy, healthy and do all stuff that lends itself to more financial gain can. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. That's the ideal, I think. But I'm personally, I don't, I, I don't know, maybe this is capitalist me coming out. I don't have a problem ha- with that, ha- would not have a problem with having a lot of money, like, I would not mm-hmm. have a problem with that. I think it's how you handle it and the kind of person yeah. you are with that money. Because I think when you have a lot of money, you can redistribute it to so many different, it's a resource you get to redistribute um, in positive ways if you do it positively. Well, I agree with that to an extent. But yeah. I think that's only when you have you in mind, right? When you have more money, you are now not only taking care of your household, you're taking care of everybody who's working for your household. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's not, and I don't mean like the people who like your family necessarily, like, okay, if you want to include them to your payroll, okay, that's fine. But I'm talking about like, you know, your um, assistant, maybe your hair person, your nail person. And these are things you do, you don't even have to have, but you are supporting someone's life, right? Agreed. So now all these people are now dependent on you on top of now you, you know, for example, you have to I enjoy learning about finances so when you're making a million dollars you have to have some way of spending that million dollars so you can get tax breaks or you're going to be taxed right so now you're worried about that you have to pay somebody for that now because I'm sure you probably don't want to do that on your own for one for two you may not be educated on that and for three you um 
you know, you may not know all the tax cuts that maybe a tax person knows. So now you're supporting that person's household. Then you have all these bills to support this millionaire lifestyle that you are you have, right? People are coming at you for money. You have friends that who you thought were your friends are not your friends anymore. People who weren't your friends now trying to be your friends. So it's just like, you know, you're like, yeah. is all that worth it? I guess, I mean, that's, I think that is the negative part of it. I'm not going to take away that that is not the negative part of it. I think that's a negative part of it. And that's why I don't, I don't think being a millionaire or being wealthy is for everybody, not to be rude, but I don't think everybody is prepared to handle that lifestyle that comes with it, with wealth True. and money and managing. Agreed. The and man- I mean, that's why some people are not able to maintain in you, right? So, so. Because it's when you have wealth, that's something that that becomes a new task to manage. You don't just have money and like whatever. It's like that has to be something you take care of. You nurture the same way you might a child. You know what I mean? But yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I think having your mind wrapped around like okay, if I'm going to be if if my life takes me in the direction of that, then I will definitely be a good steward of it and do the best I can mm-hmm. to make sure that it continues to be as positive an experience as possible, not just, you know, Mm -hmm. just wait, either wasting it away or I don't properly handle it. And we've seen people not properly handle it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're talking about a little, like some chump change at that. Like, so you can, you imagine a million dollars. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. That's fair. Is it my question? Yes, ma'am. All right. So the next question is, have you changed your mind about anything recently? Um, Have I changed my mind about anything recently? Mm. Okay. So my mind has kind of changed on this. So um, this was last year before I moved to where I live now. I really didn't want to move here. I was very adamant. I'm like, I do not want to live here. Mm. Um. And just because of like the stigma around living here, but I really like living here. It's really nice. It's really nice. I live in a really good area, um, Mm -hmm. very like quiet neighborhood. Um, There's a bunch of stuff to do around here. I don't live far from the city. There's a bunch of nature trails, naturey scenery or scenic Mm -hmm. um, sites and stuff that you can go to that are really close to my house. So it's definitely a vibe. I really enjoy living here. And I never thought I would say that because there is quite a stigma um, living in this area, but I just feel like I live in a good part. So there's always good parts. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you know, yeah. I definitely something I did ever since I I scoped out where I'm living. I like I definitely identified the good parts, and I'm like, Lord, let me get my change up. <laughs> so I get up. Seriously, get to yes, these ma'am. good parts. Get your coins up. Yeah, there's definitely beauty, I think, pretty much everywhere you go, or peacefulness Facts. everywhere you go. Um, Just got to find it. Agreed, yeah. Well, and I think the, I think the we, thing, too, is... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You finish up. Oh, uh, what I was going to say, too, is that um, because, you know, like, I lived in South Carolina before I moved to where I live now, um, you are looking online, and it looks aesthetically pleasing. And then you get there, and you're yeah. like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So, like, this place that I live in now, I just happened to be riding around and found this place. I had no idea where I was moving to. Um, and it just happened to be in a really good area. It was really close to everything. It was a really nice apartment. Kind of fits my vibe or whatever um, versus where I was going to move. I would not have enjoyed living over there at all. It was definitely way more urban. There was a lot going on over there. Yeah. Um, where I live, it's pretty quiet. It's, everything closes down on grandma time. That's my time um, around nine o'clock. So, you know, that's perfect for me. But where we were going to, like, move um, and looking at online, I would not have been happy living over there. So everything truly happens for a reason. Thank yeah. you, Lord. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes you really, I mean, you really, and you can't know a lot of stuff about the area until you actually are physically there. That's something I learned earlier this year too, is like, you know, where I was living before I'm living, where I'm living now, it was, uh, you, you can't know, you can't know. <laughs> you can do every ounce of research and still not really know. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to answer this, my portion of this question. It, what, did it, what was the question again? Hold on. Here's your question. 
uh, what have I changed my mind about recently? Oh, yes, good. Mm-hmm. So something I I decided to change my mind about, which I I just I don't know what came over me a wave, <laughs> but I've decided to embrace being in front of the camera because <laughs> I you know I mean everybody knows like I'm usually like very much behind the camera like that's where my artistic uh interest lie is like writing directing and helping to create make these things come to life and mm-hmm. you know driving the idea but i've embraced the idea that like since i've had to put myself in front of the camera like i may as well uh i may as well make uh, m- make if i can make money off of it right <laughs> like you mm-hmm. know i i used to be very much like oh no that's kind of a vain thing to do i'm talking about modeling by the way it's kind of a vain thing to do. It's not something that I would want to put myself out there in, in that way. Cause you know, I'm not really, I'm really not a performer. I really, like I said, I'm very much behind the scenes. So I started exploring that from a different angle because I used to, I just really used to think like there was something I either wasn't vulnerable enough to do it or I wasn't able to put myself out in that way or people are looking at me and getting something from it that I'm not intending to put out or whatever. And I'm like, you can take your power back actually by standing in that space. One hundred percent. There's something powerful about like saying I'm using my body to not only like ideally, you know, make money for myself, but also to mm-hmm. put my own body in a position to, to show this work off. Like that yeah. is a powerful stance. So I don't know why, like as much as I photographed myself or photographed other people, it hadn't occurred to me that I could, that there was something powerful in that, not just submitting to whatever the, or doing whatever the director says or whatever the the writer says or whatever, that there is a, um, you have your own interpretation. There's your body is, is what's making this become alive. So Mm -hmm. I'm trying to explore that more by, you know, uh, exploring modeling or I don't think I'll get into acting because that just seems too much to me, but like explore performance. Not more. the, the uh, director trying to say acting is too much. That's for ghetto. Me, <laughs> for me though, like, but the thing is people, giving ghetto. so many people do it beautifully and I just, I appreciate what they do and I want it to stay like, beautiful for what they do. True. I don't want to paint it <laughs> with like my, you know, inability to par acting a par performance so but now I'm like I'm trying to just like open myself up to the idea that that could that is a possibility to be a, to be in a performance type space because most of the time you know directors are very much they're just sort of like the film nerds like they study the film mm-hmm. so they study putting it together and they don't even mm-hmm. think about what the performer is going through but yeah. I think it's good to know you should know because you're directing their bodies, you know. Very true. Mm-hmm. So that's something that changed my mind recently because I was very shut off to the whole idea. Like very, like no, that's not me. That's not the realm I go in. I stay very much over here behind the scenes, and I still and I love behind the scenes. That's what I ultimately want to be doing. I'm never leaving behind the scenes, but like if I if in front of the camera is also an option, why not explore that? You know. True. Yeah. So that's what I mean. That's what's been you have nothing to lose, you know? What'd you say? Then you have nothing to lose. If anything, it's like learning experience. Exactly, yeah. So that's what's changed my mind most recently because even before this year started, I never really would have even, that would have not been something that came out of my mouth. So True. You know, you evolve, you change. Yeah, forever growing. It's a miracle. Who would have thought? Not me. Exactly. All right. Um, my next question is, what would your younger self not believe about your life today? Mm. Should I answer that? Yeah. Mm, I think I actually thought about this the other day. I was like, as much as I complain about like what's not happening, what should be happening, younger me would be thrilled. 12 year old me would be thrilled that I came all the way out here. <laughs> And I'm now living in this cute little like studio and like trying mm-hmm. to like make your way in Los Angeles. Like that was what 12 year old me wanted to be doing desperately as a little Facts. kid. I feel that. Yeah. I really wanted to be doing that. And I, as soon as I'm here, I'm like, come on, 
not complaining, but like, man, it's hard, it's difficult. Like, and, blah, blah. and I'm like, I try to remind myself, like, little me would love that you're doing this right now. Mm-hmm. So I try, mm-hmm. to, I try to take take a step back and not be as hard on myself. Okay. Yeah, what about you? Um, I think that, let me think. Um, I'm just going to say, like, in general, I am where I am. Um Mm-hmm. I think I briefly touched about touched on this like some episodes ago, but like a lot of like my middle school, high school, even college years are kind of like a blur for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, I just, um, I, I mean, I guess like my younger self would not believe like I it's okay, like I'm, you know what I mean? I'm at where I'm at today, and it's it's fine, you know. Got through it, yeah. kind of thing. Actually, living life, enjoying life kind of thing. Um, and also another thing is that I am not medical, um, Dr. G, the medical examiner, because I knew I was going to be her. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the girl just knew she was going to be a Dr. G junior. Okay. So, mm-hmm. but I think everything worked out how it should. I'm enjoying what, um, what I'm doing now as far as a job and whatnot. So I'm excited to see where this takes me. Um, see what the future has to hold, but yeah, that's what I say. You're going to be all mm-hmm. right. You're gonna be just fine. Sometimes you do have to remind yourself, like, this is what I asked for. This is what I prayed for. Yeah. What this is the direction I wanted to be in. And while it mm-hmm. might be the absolute pinnacle right now, it's still like, you. if you're making steps in that direction and you see identifiable ways that you have made steps, like you are, that's something to be uh, uh, proud of, you know? You're true. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I do think like you reminding yourself or like congratulating yourself along the process because I mean, you know, it's hindsight, right? In that moment, it feels um, impossible, hard, and challenging, and all that stuff. But like hindsight, you're like, wow, I did that. You really did that. Yeah, I got you, girl. You know. Yeah. So something that helps me actually is I go back through my phone camera roll from time to time. I don't know if you do this too, but I. Because, you know, you'll have pictures saved from like years and years and years ago from even transferring from different phones. So sometimes I have pictures from when I was like 18 and I go back and scroll through and look at all the things I've been able to do even in the last six or seven years, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that really always humbles me and makes me really like grateful and filled with gratitude because I'm like, look how much you've been able to do because you get to see it all in one you know, one t- setting, you're like, wow, like I really actually, I've done things in my life. I can like, even if I die today, I, I, I tried, I did, <laughs> did some stuff, you know? So very true. I try to remind myself of that when I'm feeling like, oh man, life is not going the way I want it to go, or I'm not doing what I, what I ultimately want to be doing. And I'm not in that place yet. I try to remind myself, like, look for how far you have come. Like that is a blessing. That's something to be grateful for, you know? Yeah. So yeah, but answer ask your next your next question. Yeah. It, well, I think it's is it your turn? Oh no, it's my turn. No, my it's turn. your turn. Okay, this one is: What's the most pain you've ever been in that was not physical? The most pain I've been in that's not physical. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think probably. Um, hmm. okay I, I know so it'll probably be when I like cut you and mom off at the same time mm-hmm. that was probably the hardest just because like normally you know we have our little like spats or whatever but usually it's like one or the other it's you know it kind of like goes in like a rotation it's like hey, i'm really heavily talking to courtney i'm like really heavily talking to mom and then one kind of dies off in the process right vice mm-hmm. versa kind of thing um but th- this particular time um it was both and so it was just kind of like Ugh. that felt different because i am used to having either one or the other if not both um and we're pretty well at that time we are at that time, I want to say we were we were like really close, like so, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so that would probably be the hardest, like not physical thing, just because it was like something new. But I, I do, I'm grateful for that experience because I think it made me kind of like you know, I hate to say this and be stereotypical, but like kind of like man up and be like you know, you got to figure life out, you know, for you, not for anybody else. 
So yeah. Sometimes I think it was good. That. I think sometimes well, it takes that. Yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, because if not, like, especially like with you um, being that we're, we're twins, it's kind of like I'm, while, you know, I'm quick to be like, hey, here's some advice. I'm also looking for that in return. So, Mm -hmm. um, or like that um, reassurance, maybe, of like, yeah, you should do that, or you shouldn't do that. When really, I shouldn't be looking to anybody for that, but myself. So, yeah. That was, that was actually, I wouldn't call that like, that wasn't a painful thing in my life so much, but it was a lesson I think we all had to learn is like, our lives were low key interdependent on each other before we left for college. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I don't think we realized how much we relied on each other for just advice, reassurance and like overall support, mm-hmm. which was great. I mean, it was great that we had that kind of supportive environment. I wouldn't take that away for yeah. the world. And I think in during, during that time, that was necessary, you it know, was, yeah, it was just because of yeah. the dynamic was a little different then. We also had somebody else involved in that. And in order to make sure everybody was OK, we kind of had to have that. So oh, but yeah. now that we're older and we're able to make our own choices, that needed to go. To out. Yeah. You had to readjust the relationship. Like, you know, now I think we're kind of all just getting to the place where we really all like respect that. Like if I don't like something that mom does, or I don't like something that Kaylin does or whatever, that's cool. I don't love them any less. I just, yeah. not, it doesn't work for me. You exactly. know what I mean? Like, and and then the, now there's like also a level of respect in that of like, you know, that's yeah, just like, Courtney's boundary. As an adult. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And I think, that for a while we were a little bit like we were just especially probably in our college years early to mid college years it was like we hadn't figured out that groove yet of like respecting that everybody has their own path and everybody has to figure it out for themselves so we would like bump heads I feel like a good bit over like kind of minor things and things that are under the bridge now but um but we would bump heads over that because like we just had not we hadn't addressed that like we need to we need to allow everybody to be an individual and our lives have changed all three of our lives have changed so much just in the time period that we went to college you know no for sure drastically yeah this is the most change I think that's that's actually happened in our lives is like we went from absolute total consistency for the first 18 19 years of our lives to now that I mean None of us live in the same state. Mom's got married. You're in your relationship. You like, mm-hmm. you know, I, we pursue different career paths. Yeah. And, like, like different areas. Like, yeah, none of us live the same st- lifestyle. None of us at all. live yeah. lifestyle at all, actually. Which is like normal. You know what I mean? Like, I, back then it was like, that was an odd construct. But like now it's like, that is so normal. Like Courtney should want to live her own life and explore that however she explores that. And same Mm -hmm. thing for me, you know what I mean? Like I was adamant about making sure that I was able to do that. So why shouldn't Courtney get the same respect and or mom, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, just giving the, each other the space to do that and just being respectful in that. Um, Mm -hmm. Whereas with the codependency, a lot of, nobody was really allowed to be any different than what, you know, I saw fit for you. Or and yeah, vice versa, and, which that, that's not how that works. Yeah, it was. We were all trying to project our ideas of the other person on each other. Them. Yeah, and that's not fair. Mm-hmm. We were all trying to do that to each other. Mm-hmm. I don't think I. I know for sure I was guilty of of it, and I think you. Oh were, yeah. You were looking totally at me. Guilty. Like, you should be like this, and mom was looking at both of us like y'all both should be like this, and we were looking at her like mm-hmm. you should be like this, and it's like yeah. you have to let. You have to let go and learn to love somebody. That's what unconditional love is. They are. Yeah. Is loving somebody even if you don't agree with everything that they do. Exactly. Yeah. And, and whatever decision they make, that is okay. Exactly. <laughs> like I agree, keep saying that, but, you know, but when you're in that code of, codependent type of relationship, it's really, you didn't, I didn't see it as okay. And I was like, no, you have to do this because I learned this way. Da, da, da. And like, that's just not how that goes. Your experience mm-hmm. is going to be your experience. And however you learn that is on you. And that's for you to figure out. That is not for me to project my experience on you or like yeah. my fear, what happened in my experience to be projected onto you. So yeah. it, it, was, it was just a hot mess. It was a really, really, really like interesting time for me. However, I really am glad that I experienced that because I needed that. That was like the extra push that I needed to yeah. just figure out my life instead of relying on everybody else to help me figure out my life. First of all, they don't know what makes me happy, <laughs> you know? 
So, I I mean, I would have been miserable at some point because I would have been doing what everybody else wanted me to do. So, I advise anybody that's going through that, figure out what makes you happy and do that because I promise you, it is so liberating. Liberating. And I think also, like, if, you know, I think we were blessed that our situation is we were all at least receptive enough to the idea of changing the relationship if it needed to change. Yeah. You know, everybody doesn't have a receptive family like that. So I understand that. But I will say in our situation, what was really helpful is like when those things do come up, we were all like, if we don't know how to properly handle the situation now, let's at least split up until we do know. You know, exactly. like we had enough yeah. foresight to say, like, you know what? We're not going to irritate the situation anymore. Let's just mm-hmm. step back until we can come to a situation, come to yeah. an end. And I also. Um, I also will say to you that like everybody was in during that time of like not really communicating, everybody was super respectful of like just giving everybody their space, which was nice too. Um, Cause I think also to what happened? It doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. Um, we've had the other end of that where somebody doesn't respect our boundary. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it was good to know that like, you know what, let me just give her her space. I'm gonna get my space. Let me just work on me in this moment. She works on her this moment and maybe later on we can kind of come together. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. versus it being like, you know, I'm going to keep harassing her and calling her Mm -hmm. like, no, clearly she's saying she needs X, Y, and Z. So let me be respectful of what she's asking from me and honor that wish until she's ready. Mm -hmm. Versus it being the other way where somebody's not being respectful. So I appreciate that. Yeah. For the most part. Well, something I, there was, go ahead, go ahead. I was saying something that I ended up learning in tandem with that is like, I had to learn to let go of, like, I had to learn to decipher what was my fear and what was my mom and Caitlin's fear about my yeah. life. That was something, that was a big thing I had to learn because for a long time I was living in what was mom's fear, what was Caitlin's fear, what what they would not have done. You know, neither, mm-hmm. one of my, neither, neither Caitlin nor my mom would have taken the same leap I did to to move out here. But the thing is like, it's not their life. And it's not yeah. wrong with that. So yes, for them, and it's not, and I don't even know if the word is really fear, but for them, it didn't make sense for their life. And that's cool. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for my life. And so I had to learn to, I had to decipher that internal speak of like, whose fear is this? I had an internal, in my head, I had what mom was saying, what Caitlin was saying, what other people were saying. And it's like, I'm, I felt, I really felt like I felt more suffocated because I was like, I know I'm supposed to be doing something else or pursuing something or moving in this direction. Uh-huh. And it's not that I won't, but I can't keep talking myself out of it because uh-huh. what somebody would or would not do. I'm going to miss what yeah. is for me by not doing what I genuinely feel, uh-huh. you know? Which to me yeah, is a big fair. mistake. I think it would have been a bigger mistake to just not, not do it. Yeah, not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah. I so, agree with that. And I, think, and I also like for, I, I guess, you know, from my perspective, I I don't, and that was not what I was trying to project, but I, I'm assuming that's what I ended up projecting was mm-hmm. like, oh, well, you shouldn't do this because I had this happen to me. Um mm-hmm. And the only and the reason why I did that was because I wish somebody would have been like, "Hey, here's how you prepare," you know. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, I don't. It probably did not come off like that. So I don't. I can promise you that. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. That's not. I. That's true. That it didn't come off that way. But I think I understood what you were saying. Is that it's not that I didn't miss the point, and I get the yeah. trepidation. Like it's not. These are big, major life changes we were making. It's not like we were making these like small playground decisions. It's yeah, not, it, these are big changes. So I get, I know it was coming from a genuine place, mm-hmm. but I think you have to decipher for yourself. Like, okay, I hear what they're saying. I hear it, but if the drive is is stronger than the fear, I think mm-hmm. it's better to go with the drive. And the thing is, yeah. I and I when I made the leap for myself, I made the leap as prepared as. I really could have been. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And stuff yeah. still. And I, yeah, that's out. exactly what I meant by what I was saying is like, just be prepared, you know? Yeah. I mean, and Which, prepared, you've experienced it now. So you're like, you know, thank God you were prepared because the things yeah. that happened when you moved out there, it was like, oof. Exactly. And I'm glad I was prepared. I wasn't, I didn't want to not come prepared. But I mm-hmm. will say though that 
um, stuff was going to happen, whether I came then or now is like oh, yeah. nothing was going to stop. Life was never going to just, it was never going to just be easier somehow, mm-hmm. you know, and it's even as prepared as I came, like it didn't stop yeah. stuff from happening. I was Nothing. just, I just had a little bit more to maneuver. That's all. Exactly. You know? but I'm, I will say having that little bit of financial security, I'm sure that helped, you know, even with oh, the last helped. moving is, you know, so. I mean, it definitely helps. It's not that I, I appreciate the route that I took. I'm grateful for the route that I took now. I'm not even mm-hmm. saying that, that was a bad route. I just, what I'm saying though, is like, even for my own mind, I try to be like, okay, well, I'll do this and I'll plan it, plot. And then I'm, I kid you not, the last five, six months, four or five months has been almost a total like twist of every little plan I thought I was going to have. And I've mm-hmm. ended up in a, in a situation where I'm like, I'm having to just really figure it out. Day by day and, start, <laughs> and, start it. It. and which yeah. is like the universe is saying to me, the universe is like, basically just saying Jesus, the universe is saying like, you can't outplan me. So you have to surrender and ride this at, ride it until you get to where I, what I have for you. And that's what uh-huh. I've been doing. Really. <laughs> that's really what I've been doing. Max. So, yeah, okay. but I, you know, you need the space to figure that stuff out and nobody yeah. can really tell you that you have to experience it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. So, yeah. did you answer for yourself? I don't know if you answered for yourself. Oh, yeah, I haven't answered that yet. Um, most painful pain you've ever been that was not physical. Um, I'm thinking. I think it's been in spurts throughout my life, like, I don't know if the if one pain was greater than the other. I mean, I definitely think there's some childhood stuff that was like painful, very painful mm-hmm. emotion. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's been things, a string of things that have happened in like my adulthood that have also been painful too for different reasons. Yeah. So, and I don't know if one outweighs the other, really. No, I agree with that. Like it's like pain's pain, but I do. Yeah, think I just talk about like the most recent. Yeah, I think. I mean, I will say, a pain that really helped me to grow and like become became kind of core foundation was just definitely dealing with our narcissistic father growing up, though. For sure, um, I think that made that is part of my core personality, honestly, not being a narcissist, not a narcissist, but, like, but the core experiences for me of dealing with somebody who has that behavior, um, mm-hmm. that absolutely molded, I think both of us in different ways and to the people that we are standing here today. 100%. Absolutely. I think, Stop thinking, yeah. Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I think, we would be we would be absolutely lying if we just said that that had no sort of impact and that the painful moments of that or the emotionally and mentally painful moments of that are what um that's when you develop a core character you know yeah so that's what i that's what i would say is like kind of like the earliest probably i guess most painful but there's there's been other things since that time mm-hmm. For sure. Okay. It's fair. Is that my question? No, that's your question. Yeah, that was my question. All right. So is there a feeling that you miss? Hmm. There's two feelings I miss. I miss um, being a kid and really... Not the, just the carefreeness of it, but the uh, like exploratory adventure mm-hmm. side of being a kid, just really figuring things out for the first time, yeah. and having those kind of innocent, uh, mm-hmm. joyful experiences as a kid. I miss that feeling. Even something as simple as like when I discovered I Love Lucy was great. Like <laughs> that was an enjoyable experience for me. I would go back to that feeling. Back. And okay. then another feeling I would go back to is um, – when I was like adolescent years, 15, 16, 
playing volleyball and really when my uh, body became attuned with what I wanted it to do, <laughs> like when I became more cordial, <laughs> I guess, mm-hmm. and like feeling like I was actually succeeding at something for like the first time in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then actually having a goal set to something that I could achieve, you know, an identifiable goal. I think that feeling really helps drive me as a young person. Mm-hmm. So I miss yeah. that feeling too, the innocence of it. Now, other things made it perverted because of people and politics and stuff surrounding it. But the innocence and joy of it for me is what I miss. Yeah. Okay. It, was, it was a pure joy for me. It was exhausting, but it was a joy, you know. Mm-hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. What about you? Um, a feeling that I miss, I would agree and say a little kid, but just like the carefree nature of being a kid, even though our childhood was kind of... Um, we had moments of of darkness, we'll say. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it was you know pretty pretty cool. So I would say my childhood. Also, I would honestly, I'm gonna say, um, it's not really a, a feeling. It's not really a feeling. It's just like something that I probably would change if I could. Um, so I guess I won't answer that. A feeling that I miss? Mm. You know, I, I will say this. I miss hanging around um, Ashlyn. She was just yeah. such a like little joy to be around. Like, we were always together. So I do miss, like, hanging out with Ashlyn and just, like, you know, like, seeing how she's doing and whatnot. But my um, my draw to children is usually over by like three, four, you know? <laughs> so when they get to that mouthy stage, I'm like, all right, time to go. <laughs> and by the time we had gone to college, um, by the time we go to college, like she had ventured on to like my mom. My mom really likes that age. So she was more interested in my mom anyway. So it was an easy, it was an easier transition. She was less yeah. like almost dependent on me, I guess, or like needed my attention to be, to be on her kind of thing from which she wasn't like a needy child anyway. So it wasn't like I had to have all my attention on her anyway, but she just was like, she could care less about that point about me. So I mean, it transitioned really well. Um, But I I do like, she was like the little sister that we just never, we never had. uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was, (laughs) she was absolutely the little sister we never had. And she was very content to be so like, she was quite, she (laughs) she was not the, even though she was an only child, she like knew. She, it's almost oh, yeah, like she, she knew. was born knowing that she was yeah. like, she like had. Oh, we were there for like, like her entire life. life. So what do you say? We were there like pretty much since she was born. Yeah, from the time she was born. But I mean, so, yeah. you know, some kids kind of, but some kids can fight that and be like, "Well, this is, mm-hmm. this is my family, not yours," and that, that kind of thing. But she was always very like happy to integrate herself right on into. Uh, it's like, like I was saying, like it was almost as if she like had some idea. It was like very natural for her. Like oh, it, no. she yeah, knew no like, different. Like, connected, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which I'm sure that'd be cool for her because we were way older than her, and she just went right along with us. Yeah, she <laughs> so. really did. We were <laughs> like we were in high school when she was. We were we graduated high school the year she went into kindergarten. Or no, we went into college the year she went into kindergarten. So can you imagine that dynamic? We were grown grown um, by the time that she entered into the world. So she had just like older sisters to do life with. Um, and yeah. so she, you know, we got to go out and do adventures. Like if her mom couldn't take her, her dad couldn't take her, we would take her someplace or we would go yeah. hang out or like, you know, when she, she was like, eight, like two or three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, I mean, it was a vibe. I, you know, I really enjoyed like being around her because she was, um, she's, I like to say she was pretty mature for her age, but all she knew was adults, really. She didn't have any other like kids around besides like daycare and stuff like that. For the most part, she was around, you know, us or her parents or um, other family members, but everybody was significantly older than her. So Mm -hmm. she was a vibe. I, so I do miss like hanging around Ash, um, especially when she was younger. So. She was like itty bitty. Oh yeah, yeah, she was the sweetest little baby ever. Yeah, I just, I always, honestly, I like always saw her like just like being, continuing to be like part of our lives, even as like adults. Yeah, I could have never imagined her not being, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But we're yeah. like, we're almost. I mean, like we're twenty five now, mm-hmm. and like, 
it would actually it would even be cooler like to like <laughs> if she were like still in our lives as much as she was then yeah. because this would be this would be a great opportunity for her to, uh, to like learn more about what it means to be a young woman yeah. since that's like the yeah. immediate stage in her life since she's mm-hmm. she would be like 12 now um, yeah I mean how cool would it be to be like my like cool older cousin is like in LA. Yeah. <laughs> you know like that I mean I could imagine middle school talk getting quite <laughs> interesting then you know <laughs> I can only imagine what they're talking about now. <laughs> like, I know, right? She's in middle school. I don't, no, she would be teaching us things. We'd be like, what in the world? Yeah, seriously, because, honey, I am a grandma these days. You cannot tell me any different. Honey, I would not know what's going on. I know. And we thought we were wild in middle school. I'm telling you, we thought we were on some stuff. And I can only imagine. The things I see online, I'm just like, what? I know, right? I cannot. She's with, like, TikTok that. and stuff. I was, like, saw a picture the other day of, like, old Instagram. And I was like, what was I doing? <laughs> Right. Oh, that anyway. <laughs> this is like when Instagram had like that white, like you had like Instagram the blue banner with like the little pixelated looking oh, Instagram so thing, oh, and then you had like the little white little like banners underneath. Uh, well, like your your picture, and then there's like the white little like blocks right there between your picture and then the next picture. A mess, a mess. <laughs> oh my god, old Instagram, right? Like, oh god, let that go. I, I had Instagram when it was like that. You don't think so? I don't think so. I got Instagram when I was seventeen. Really? I yeah, and I only got it because like the volleyball team was like, "You need to get an Instagram," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> what I like for mom for a while, mom didn't let us get an Instagram. We were allowed to have a Facebook, but we weren't allowed to have a Facebook and Instagram. I had a Twitter, but you not had a Twitter. Mm-hmm. I had a Twitter. You know, I feel like was there something that mom didn't allow us to have, like social media wise? I thought she let us have. I thought she let us have anything. Well, she didn't like, I don't know, maybe something. Didn't pay attention to it. I was going to say, we really didn't care. We were I'm like, whatever. But maybe, I don't know, maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. Anyways, so I, you know, it was, a, I think it was a while before I had Instagram. I never, I'm not like a huge social media person anyway, so it really doesn't matter, but. I had a Twitter yeah, in high I school. I had a Twitter. I had a Twitter and I also had um, a Tumblr and a Facebook, I think. You know, I think she had more issues with Tumblr. Mom? I feel like I remember her being like, that Tumblr and the stuff they share on Tumblr is just inappropriate for kids. Really? I don't remember that. Because mom didn't even know what Tumblr was. She probably still doesn't know. She probably doesn't. But No, hmm. you were big. You were pretty big on Tumblr. Yeah, I'd be re- reposting all the time. Yeah, you were pretty. You were the one who got me into Tumblr. Because actually, I think I yeah. had Tumblr at Twitter. Yeah, I had Tumblr. And the only reason why I had Tumblr is because of Ashley. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll be on there posting all the time. Little like aesthetically pleasing like clothes that I would never wear. I was a t-shirt and jeans type of girl, okay? Honestly, mm-hmm. leggings. I used to always wear leggings in high school and I never got caught. That's wild. Look out for the center. It was only because of the center because I would always like duck and dodge people. Just because I wasn't in school on campus all day. That was actually one thing I was glad to go to college about because I was like, I don't have to duck and dodge these teachers anymore trying to like... <laughs> trying to be cute. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, you know God. I mean? I, my outfit, if it comes down to breaking dress code or my outfit, you know what I'm choosing. It's breaking so. dress code all day. <laughs> did you ever so, get did you ever get um did they ever get I, you in I trouble for that? Time. It was for leggings and Miss Scurry's mm. class. Because Miss remember Miss Scurry was like the biggest dress code of all. I don't know why you I thought like Scurry's you know, class. Yeah, I wore leggings to Scurry's class with the oversized t shirt. Remember that was the thing back in the like then I mean it still is kind of a thing really now. Like on. leggings and oversized t shirt. But mm-hmm. it was those really long sleeve oversized t-shirts with like the, the you know, the Victoria's Secret ones with the big words written on the back. Mm-hmm. So I was wearing that. <laughs> those are terrible. <laughs> and I remember I got away with it for the first part of the class. We were all, cause we were all taking a test and I got up to turn my test in and she was like, <gasps> and she was like, you finish the so test. dramatic. But I'm going to give you this slip. Because you can't go out like this. And I was like, and I had on like black leggings. Like, you know, black leggings are standard now, but like black leggings, you couldn't see anything. The thing covered my butt, like the shirt covered my crazy. butt and like halfway down my legs. I was like, honestly, that was most that was more PG than some of my other non-legging outfits. Exactly. So, what, I, what I don't understand about that is like, why do I have to be dress coded for your little boys who need to control themselves imagination? Like that is not my problem. Really what y'all need to do is dress code these little boys with these little booty shorts on. 
or well, really what the issue is, is like the older male teachers there. They don't want to like, cause you know, creepiness. That is not my problem, buddy. It's not. Why are you being a pervert? Why are you? Yeah. It's like, why are these like old dudes looking at young women like this? Like 16, 15, 16 year old girl. Like this. Bro, I used to wear leggings all the time, all Mm -hmm. the time. But it was but so I never got caught, so it was so po- that's when it had honestly just come out to do that to wear the leggings mm-hmm. like a t-shirt. Now it's yeah. standard. Everybody does that. But mm-hmm. like that's like mom attire. I wonder yeah. what the attire is today. I don't know. I would love to go to a high school and see like what are the kids really wearing? Seriously. I'd like to pass as a high schooler if I really tried. Because <laughs> I stay on the trends pretty much. But oh yeah, I was gonna say. Oh, I was saying something about Twitter. <laughs> when I first made my Twitter, it was like cool to tweet lyrics to songs and just like tweet the lyrics and not have any kind of explanation or anything about it. Really? And, yeah, like at the time. So I would tweet like, you know, what I was listening to, which as a 16 year old was not the like, popular cool lyrics. I was listening to like Anita Baker. So I went back and looked at my like, it's my Twitter feed from like years and years and years ago. And I was like, now why on earth was I posting lyrics to you bring me joy at 16 years old? Like, I really That's feel like cool. I was going through something. <laughs> Facts. I, was, um, <laughs> I need to check mine. This is hilarious. I had I went through and deleted it all because I was like, I don't want nobody coming back years later and being like, you oh, said so and so in December of 2014. Like, mm-mm, I don't need that. And you were a stalker. I deleted it mm-hmm. all. But that's wild. I was like, That's not hilarious. reading me as a 16 year old with Anita Baker lyrics. <laughs> that is priceless. <laughs> I'm dead. But I was listening to, I only listened to oldies even back then. I think people think it's like some vintage, like, oh, I just put it on to like seem cool. But like, Caitlin and my family know, like, I'm I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. I have always loved vintage oh, stuff. Honey. I've I'm talking as vintage as possible life. you can get. <laughs> like, it's not it's not like i i live this <laughs> this is the lifestyle I seriously live. yeah this is nothing oh. new this is old news all my old music that i listen to now i definitely got from courtney so yeah which is crazy because sometimes i listen to more like the turn up type like twerk girl music mm-hmm. and it's like because caitlin put me on <laughs> as a kid see <laughs> with the rap and oh, I was yeah. like, Luther Baker in the corner, or like just some old art, or Luther Vandross or something. Yeah. Which is odd. It's like we pretty much not fully switched, but like I listen to a lot of older like indie music now. Courtney listened to like Megan Thee Stallion, odd, yeah. and Anita Baker. Like, can you imagine that playlist? You have Megan Thee Stallion, Torque Your Butt Off, you know, and then you have Anita Baker, We Bring Me Joy. Like, mm, odd. Right. Okay. Or what's that girl's name? Lotto. You like her too? I mean, I kind of like a little song she did with Mariah Carey was kind of cute. It's a little bop. Oh, God. No, 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 no. And no. what's the other girl? <laughs> Sweetie, Sweetie. I can't really get into Doja Cat, but Sweetie. I like Doja Cat, actually. I don't really like Doja Cat. She don't do Why are you guys so quiet? <laughs> I just don't. Like, she's like, really? To me, she like, I don't know. This is going to come back to haunt me, isn't it? But, um,. <laughs> I feel it like is. She, like, she, like, tries a little bit too hard. That's what I think about Doja. Really? Cat. I think so. I like Doja. Doja is like kind of like um, what's like, kind of like Pharrell. She's just very like eccentric kind of. She just like does her own thing. I like. I appreciate that about her. And she's yeah. kind of unapologetic for it. So I pre. That's why I like Doja. She just like she's like I. You get what you get kind of thing. Even her little posts and stuff that she posted. I'm like this girl is weird, <laughs> but I love it. I mean, I get it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's something that I'm like, it's not that it's, I don't believe that she lives. I think she does live that like eccentric, weird kind of lifestyle. I think she genuinely does that. But it's something about it that I'm like, I guess I can't reconcile the pop image with that for some reason. I don't know. I like Doja Cat. But. I would I'd take Sweetie over Doja Cat, I'm gonna be honest. Sweetie over Doja Cat Gorney? That's an insult. Yeah. Get after her, guys. Get after her. Because <laughs> that's an insult. Please. Like what? No. Well, music is like kinda lit. Like have you heard that song Sweetie? Tapping? What? No, I don't like her. Or like the icy girl. She sounds just like anybody else. Oh my God. Icy wifey. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? 
Oh gosh, please stop. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, Megan is and I understand, but Sweetie over Doja? Oh God. Oh, God. I don't know that one Megan Stallion song, Plan B. Plan B. I don't think I've heard that one. It's like something, something popping Plan B's because I ain't planning to be stuck with you. Yeah, I love that. Oh God, Jesus, help <laughs> the child. <laughs> But yeah, so I don't know. I'm like getting more into like the like, I guess it's thoughts. <laughs> it's like hot girls. I don't know. I'm kind of okay with them. Even though there's like a million one of them. Like everybody's a female rapper at this point. Oh yeah, and like Saucy Santana. True. I kind of like some of his stuff. Oh God, I canceled. <laughs> Courtney, the quality of music. You went from Anita Baker, Whitney Houston, Luther Vandross to Sweetie. <laughs> Oh, no, he's not even a rapper. Oh my god! Like, Don't tell me you like the City Girls too. Huh. No. Well, wait. What's that one song? I like them. I, the like sound the is like it's kind of lit. I mean, the it's one with the Usher. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. That oh. one. Oh, did you see the video? I was like, I could have been the video girl for that. I was, all I got to do is pop my back back and forth every couple of seconds and walk in mm-hmm. heels. I can do that. Please stop. No. I haven't <sighs> seen the video for that one. I don't think so. It's not that I'm like, I just appreciate the sound. Now, are they, to me, are they, mm-hmm. I, there's a difference between an Icon and them being popular. They're popular. Icon's Whitney, Anita, Luther Vandross, you know, that Mariah Carey, that vibe, Celine Dion, mm. that's, that's a different status that is never going away for me. Unfortunately, yeah. the Saucy Santana's Megs and that they are really popular, right? Not unfortunately, but they just are popular right now. Mm-hmm. They're never, I mean, I still have Anita Baker on my playlist to this day. I still have Whitney Houston on my playlist to this yeah. day. I'm, that's never going. Now, Saucy mm-hmm. Santana might absolutely go. <laughs> yes, he should. He should have been left. <laughs> but like, the classics are staying. I mean, they've been on my you know, I've had them since high school, so mm. I could take honestly, I could go on nineties R and B Jeopardy right now and probably win. Nineties R and B now, come on. Nineties R and B and or nineties sitcoms. Okay, yeah, but I'm talking about like secular R and B or secular music from the nineties. You would not know. No, just R and B. That's what I said R and B. All right, you have your next question. Yes. Describe your perfect day. Ooh. Okay, so a day where I don't have to care for my animals. Oof, chow. Um, <laughs> and a day where I probably have to do absolutely nothing. So I don't have to, like, wash dishes. I don't have to, like, fold clothes. I don't have to clean the bathroom. I don't have to clean my room. Um, and, like, I don't have to cook myself meals. They're already there and ready for me to, you know, guzzle down my throat. Um, what else? Also, being on like a really nice like island yeah. where it's just like secluded, nobody's bothering me, alcohol galore, and I mean wine, you know, a little sippy sip here and there, mm-hmm. and um, just full of adventure, you know. I feel like that'd be a vibe. That'd be a good day. I think I would like to honestly. I'm not even gonna lie. This sounds like bougie, but I like to work up on like on the Amalfi Coast or something. Or like in Greece. Oh, wow, who has that kind of money? <laughs> I would really like to wake up in Greece. Because you, so you under bougie is an understatement <laughs> over there. Okay. <laughs> Man. Day, like got some really good food already like prepared for me. I can either go get the food or they can bring it to me, whichever one. Regardless. It sounds like you're trying food. to be in the sisterhood of traveling pants, because I mean, mm-hmm. kinda, yeah. <laughs> You, and ma'am, then, you were real specific about that location too. Well, because I'm just, I'm just seeing the clear blue water. You know what I'm saying? You know, honestly though, that's 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 it. I really want to go to Greece. Greece is it. Yeah. So, but you gotta have some Greece money, okay? Seriously. And then, what else would I do? We definitely, it would definitely involve a boat and a swim mm-hmm. in the ocean. Probably mm-hmm. go, about that. go shopping a little bit, explore the town. Get some food. Um, if I could take in either go to an art museum or maybe a play or see a movie or something, take in some artwork. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, 
I don't drink, but, you know, if I can get some virgin daiquiris or something. You gotta drink some nice wine and grease. Come on. Some nice wine, or either I can have an ice cream with sprinkles. And not the good sprinkles, the ones that are healthy, the bad sprinkles from Dollar Tree. Bad you sprinkles know. from Dollar Tree. That's important because the good ones that are healthier for you are not as tasty. Exactly. Quote, quote unquote, that's from Courtney. Yes. The bad sprinkles. <laughs> and um, yeah, that would pretty much be it. I mean, maybe even do like, I could do a little impromptu photo shoot in Greece. Facts, um, that would be beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, not really like an art project, but just kind of something impromptu to, you know, record the day. Maybe even make a little tiny video or something about the day. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I would want to mix some mm-hmm. level of creativity in with the peaceful relaxation of it all. True. No, I feel like Greece would be really beautiful to take pictures and like do like an aesthetic type of look. That would be yeah. really, really cute. Yeah, I definitely want to either there or it doesn't have to be Greece. Like I think some of the like the islands in like uh, like Fiji, some mm-hmm. in southern Pacific islands, mm-hmm. those would be really beautiful to visit. True. Even some places like in Mexico, some I would just like to wake up somewhere near like a body of water that wasn't like you know a hurricane or something. <laughs> so Seriously, <laughs> don't have tra- time to be floating away. <sighs> exactly. And I would like to go swimming too, because I like to. I actually like to be in water if I can, like, do that. Clean water, though. Just clean water, yeah. I'm okay with the ocean. I don't like pools. Really? I just like, pools really don't sit well with the idea of a pool. Yeah. Bothers me. Pools are like human cesspools to me. I can't. Unless it's a private pool, you know. Mm-hmm. That depends on how often you clean it. That's true. Not me being bougie over here, like private pools, Amalfi Coast. <laughs> Yeah, like, what private pool have you been to? Because I would like to know. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I haven't even been to a private pool. I'm just saying, like, what, where are you going? <laughs> really dream big I'm, over here. I've been in enough public <laughs> pools to know. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, okay. you're so right. <laughs> no, yeah, and those are not. The thing is, I used to like want to go in them all day, and I'm like, I was just swimming in pee all day. Yeah. Like, wow, that is, cr- and I was the main one peeing, and I'm, I'm sure. Like, whew, that's gross. Anyways, you live and you learn. Yeah, that would be a perfect day for me, I think. Not, I mean, not too shabby. I types of perfect days to have as well, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one of them. All right. <clears throat> so my last card says, what's your mother's name and the most beautiful thing about her? Ooh, okay, so my mother's name is Beatrice, which is also Caitlin's mother's name. Um, mm-hmm. We share a mom. Can you believe it? Shocker. But, um, Seriously. I think, <laughs> I think the most beautiful thing about mom that I really recognize is I think she is um I mean she's really she really is a teacher through and through. And I don't mean that just in like uh like superficial, that's just what she like does for her job, but she really is invested in helping people to become better versions of themselves, particularly children. And I think that that is beautiful. I think sometimes, sometimes people who aren't as aware of that of that trait about her, they take advantage of it because they just see it as like, oh, she's just being kind or she's just being giving. But it really is her nature to nurture and love and help people to become better versions of herself. Like she likes she likes that, and it feeds her in another way. Okay, because she that's fair. selflessly. That's the that's really one thing I know she does selflessly. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have to do it. She really doesn't. Actually, it would benefit her sometimes to not do it. Seriously. <laughs> oh, child. So, and I, I think some people in her life don't fully recognize the beauty that that is. Because everybody mm-hmm. doesn't have the instinct to help someone. A lot of people sure. don't have the instinct to help people. Um, and that is something beautiful to treasure that somebody has come into your life and is actively invested in helping you where whatever level you're at. Mm-hmm. And she mm-hmm. would help people at whatever level that they were at. And some people be on some low levels. Okay. Yep. <laughs> some mm-hmm. low level. And she's Bottom still the barrel. Not, yeah. And she doesn't turn she doesn't turn a blind eye to it. And she doesn't like cast them off. And which is mm-hmm. something that I I personally don't have the ability to do. 
you make it too difficult for me to teach you one time, I'm out. Seriously, and I, I get three strikes with me. Working with you. So I yeah. think that's beautiful. For sure. Okay, that's fair. That's a good one, actually. Yeah. Um, I think mine would be that mom is um, extremely, overly, excessively selfless um, mm-hmm. at the point of, like, compromising herself sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people oftentimes can take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. So... Um, when she and then not only is she selfless, she's pretty genuine about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen her in her capa- in, a, in a capacity where she wasn't. So I, yeah, that's what I would say. But it oftentimes gets taken advantage of, which hurts her feelings. So yeah, which then upsets it. Like upsets. I don't know if it upsets you, but it upsets me by proxy because I'm just that's not my personality. Like mom might not say something, but I will. You know yeah, I mean? for sure. Yeah, we're like mom. So mom is like a cute little like poodle, right? And we're the Rottweilers, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> don't let us lose, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, because like I, don't, I just don't think we have the level of like the same level of selflessness the way mom does. Oh, not I mean, at all. I mean, not have at the ability all. To be selfless in, in, in situations, but I don't exist totally in that realm. And I think mom is like almost totally genuine to people yeah yeah There's some people can be can take advantage of and yeah, it's just like the world we live in like people just aren't like that anymore like you really have to be like keep one eye open at night because it's like people are constantly trying to take advantage of trying, yeah of people and so you know yeah. it's um i luckily the friends that i do have they're pretty genuine but they're rare so yeah i'm like you know, I think I try to reserve my genuineness for the spaces where it needs to be genuine or when you're proven that, like, mm-hmm. you're someone to be, like, to really help and be selfless towards. But otherwise, then I have to I have to still protect myself, you know. Mm-hmm. 100%. So, yeah, that's what I would say. And, like, it's not, I mean, we, I try to overstep bounds now and, like, get involved in her business because she's an adult. You know, but it does, yeah. it infuriates me for her because I know she's not as mad about people doing things to her as I I would be about it. Mm-hmm. So I want to. I don't think it's that she's not as mad. I think she just, she's just more of um, the type to just be like, oh, well, that happened, but like move on. And we're like, no, but let's handle this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's give yeah. them a good talking to. A good talking to um, at, the very least. Us, at the very least, you know, because. You know, and I understand like the whole idea of like not everything's worth your your time or you, you know the battle may not be worth it, but those types of battles are always worth it to me. Yeah, so I'm just like, I got the time today. Yeah, or <laughs> and or I'll make the time. <laughs> right? One thing I'm gonna be is petty, so mm-hmm. don't don't do that. Don't yeah, do it. It's, it's just very. Mm. And I I'm just we recognize that because you know we are her children. So we recognize that, I think, more clearly. Or we we know her, like, intimately, very intimately. So yeah. I think we see that, and we see that that's something to be protected, not to be taken advantage of, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, yeah, so that's all I'll say. What I will say, though, is, like, you know, obviously I want my mom here for, like, as long as I'm here, you know? Mm-hmm. But what I will say is that, like, the couple who made the transgression list, I ain't got it. <laughs> I just don't have it for them. And when they're, if my mom is not around to be that buffer, there's really no telling what's like. There's, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have that buffer to, to, to call, to stay calm. I guess about situations. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's what I'll say. Mm-hmm. You know, not that I'm like looking for a fight, but I'm not, we're not going to back down if there is one. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, mom is a little cute little poodle and we are like the rock rattlers. So, yeah. Just saying. And the chihuahua. <laughs> the chihuahua. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. The real, yeah. We're really chihuahuas. Seriously. <laughs> Your little things will bite the crap out of you. Keep so, it up. They're real yappy. So, Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All my right, what's last your last question? Is um, 
Hmm. Uh, how can you become a better person? Ooh, okay. <clears throat> how can I become a better person? Could not be so petty. Okay. <laughs> On a serious <laughs> note. Honestly, I probably could benefit from that too. If you really like make me mad, I just feel really bad for you. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm working on that. I really am trying to be delivered, right? Um, other than that, I'd say um, really just working through, like, trauma and stuff like that, healing, because um, it, it is really liberating. It really is powerful for you to move forward, even if, you know, you caused those things or you didn't cause those things. Um, not letting those things control your life, kind of, kind of, Right. So I would say that's probably one thing that I'm currently working on. Um, and just choosing my battles, I'd say, as well. Um, for a very long time, I thought everything was my battle to fight, and it's not. So just learning when to to pick and choose, you know. Exactly. No, I agree. I think um, something I would like to become – better at is um or like just how can I become a better person Mm. I mean I don't think it ever hurts anybody to become more self-aware how their actions are coming off to other people you know like not that you have to change your everything about you or whatever to fit whatever other people think about you but Mm -hmm. I think I think I could become more self-aware of like the subtleties of when someone might be uncomfortable or somebody might not want to do something that I'm like planning or whatever, or like I could become more attuned to the subtleties of how people uh, are interacting with me. I think, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think some things slip over my head if they're not directly stated to me. That's true. That's one way I think I could improve. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure other people would have plenty of things to say. <laughs> like, yeah, you really could stop doing that. Or like, you know what I mean? Facts. So, but I think that's one thing that I could for sure really work on is like reading, I guess reading more body language subtext better. Yeah, I guess. A little more self-aware. You know, I, I guess I feel like I'm pretty self-aware, but, like, I don't think it can hurt. That's true. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think, is there something you think I could do to improve to become a better person? Um, I think just being more, like, um, not on guard, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, in a sense, just because it's just more freeing, like, because I feel like, don't mean, like, I was the same as Courtney, probably, if not worse, at mm-hmm. one point. And, um, like, now that I, I'm kind of, like, past that, it is very free to just be like, you know what, whatever, you know? Um, not whatever, because you still have to, you know, be aware. But there's a difference between being guarded and being aware, right? So Yeah. Um, but with being aware it's just like you know what I'm aware of these things I'm aware of what can possibly get me in these types of situations but I will do everything I possibly can to ensure these things don't happen however what I'm not going to do is be like on 100% defense it's just like if it happens and we figure it out from there yeah so I, think, I would say that I agree yeah I mean I could agree with that about myself because I do feel like just in light of recent like events and things I feel like mm-hmm. I've had to be on I had to increase increase my defense like tenfold because I was trying to enter a situation and relax defenses a little bit, but then it immediately had to put put defenses right back up and like yeah. even stronger. So exactly. I think some, it, it takes me time to like when I experience a traumatic situation and your defense has to be on, you have to process out of like that situation that mode of of walking in the world you know mm-hmm. yeah that's fair so and I, I don't think I'm as defensive with everybody I think some people are 
some people immediately get the defense for me because when I when I feel something slightly off about you, that's when defense goes on full full, full force. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what I think. But yeah, was that okay. your last? Question? Yeah, that was my last question. So that is, um, we're gonna wrap up level two, which is the. Um, the connection round and so tune in for our next episode where we are diving deep into level three um, and we will discuss some some topics or excuse me we'll answer some questions um, about level three which is reflection all right see you in the next one bye bye guys <laughs>